Hello, my fellow sinners who have been fully forgiven because Jesus died and he is risen. Anyone who is hung on a tree is under God's curse. You find those words in Deuteronomy chapter 21. This was the haunting refrain that played again and again in the minds of Jesus' followers on the Sabbath that we now call Holy Saturday, the Sabbath day between Good Friday and Easter morning. The man they had taken to be their Messiah, their Lord, the very Son of God, he had died on a tree. A sure sign from the Holy Scriptures, from God's Word, that he had died under the curse of the Almighty. All their hopes were now ruined. As one of them said later on, we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. But how could a man who died under the curse of God possibly do that? This is the man who asked his father to forgive us, but if he died under a curse, how could God truly have been his father? And this is also the man we put all our hopes on. It is on him we have pinned all anticipation of forgiveness. But if the last view we have of Jesus is a man dying under a divine curse, what good is that anticipation? This is what Easter is all about. No rabbits and eggs, not spring and, and blossoms and green grass. It is all the question that the followers of Christ were asking and that we must ask now. Jesus prayed from the accursed cross that we might be forgiven. What answer did he receive? What answer have we, who have echoed his cry for pardon for our sins, received? Here's the answer. The Father has forgiven us. Christ's glorious resurrection is all the proof we need, and therefore we want to spread the story to all who have sinned against the Father. Again, Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 23 says, Anyone who is hung on a tree is under God's curse. This verse uh, is, is taken from that book of Deuteronomy, which is the very foundation of Jewish law. It was that for centuries. This was no less than the constitution, you could say, of the nation of Israel. And unlike our constitution in the United States, uh, this constitution of the Israelites, that was authored by God himself. Not the dot over an I, not the crossing of a T would fall away from the law, even as Jesus Christ himself said, until everything was fulfilled. So there was no doubt in anyone's mind that on the day Jesus died, he certainly was cursed by the Almighty. The Sanhedrin provided the curse. The Romans provided the tree. The Jewish ruling council uh, condemned Jesus to be cast out of the congregation of Israel. He was condemned to death and humiliation for the sin of blasphemy. He had claimed, after all, to be the Messiah, the Son of the living God, under oath, no less, and before the high priest, the highest earthly magistrate in Israel. When he had said the words, the entire Sanhedrin, con the entire Sanhedrin condemned Jesus to die. But it, was, but it was not for the Jews to carry out that sentence. You see, they were occupied by the legions of Rome, and the Roman government had reserved all uh, death penalty cases for its own jurisdiction. After a frenzied and chaotic trial, the Roman governor condemned Jesus to be crucified to hang upon a man-made tree. And thus it was clear to all of God's people Everybody who knew that constitution of Israel, Deuteronomy, that Jesus of Nazareth would die under a divine curse. But why should so good a man as that Nazarene die like that? I mean, what great crime had Jesus committed? Had he ever raised his hand to harm anyone? Hadn't it always been to heal instead? Had he led some blood-soaked revolution through the streets of Jerusalem? No, even Pilate, the man... Uh, who signed the death order, even he protested to the last, I find no basis for a charge against him. History has recorded the crucifixion of Christ as one of the greatest miscarriages of justice of all time. But what was an injustice on the human level was actually the playing out of divine justice. Why did Jesus Christ have to die under a curse? All mankind had provided the reason. Christ was the sin-bearer for all people. 
all of humanity. And his death was the condemnation reserved for all the members of his human race. He had taken our guilt and our curse upon himself. And so it was only right that his death should be should conform to the terrible verdict of the book of Deuteronomy. All our sins were there. All our guilt was there. And so the death that the whole human race deserved under the curse of our creator whose laws we had broken was the death Christ suffered on the tree of the cross. But on Easter Sunday, the Almighty set aside all verdicts against Christ. The Sanhedrin's condemnation was overturned as the higher court of heaven reversed the sentence of death that had been reached by Jerusalem and carried out by Rome. He had been sentenced and executed upon the charge of blasphemy, but every word he had spoken had been true. He was truly the Messiah, the Son of God. The court of the Jews had been wrong. The court of the Almighty found Jesus of Nazareth innocent of the crime. But this was more than a victory for Jesus against his accusers. It is a victory for every member of the race that Jesus represents. The curse against all people was fully and finally played out to its conclusion. And once that conclusion was reached, once the crucified declared it is finished, the curse no longer hung over us. Nor does it any longer hang over him who died. The penalty was paid in full by his death on a tree. No further payment of death remains. And it is the resurrection of Jesus Christ that assures you and me of all of these truths. Jesus Christ, in the words of the New Testament, was declared with power to be the Son of God by his resurrection from the dead. Romans chapter 1 verse 4 says that. Once or twice when his enemies demanded that he give them some sign that he really had been sent from God, he told them that the sign that they would see was the sign of Jonah, that three days after he, de he died, he would rise again. And he did. What further proof do we want that all he promised is true? This is what makes Easter a holiday worthy of great celebration. But celebration is only part of what this day is about. Without a doubt, when Jesus came and stood among his disciples, the disciples felt like celebrating, absolutely. But Jesus had more in mind than just a welcome back party. Very soon, he would be sending those disciples on a mission. A mission that lasted for the past two millennia and has now become our mission. And the mission is this, to spread the story to all who have sinned against the Father. Unless people are told the empty tomb just remains a curiosity. It's become a footnote in world history text, texts, uh, with some words like, three days later, the followers of Jesus claimed that he had risen from the dead. And then the author goes on with the more important matters of the Roman Empire and barbarian invasions and stuff like that. And don't think there aren't those to this day who would like the empty tomb to be nothing more than an empty tomb. But Christ would not allow his resurrection merely to be some mystery for the ages to try and solve. Then he opened his disciples' minds, we read, so that they could understand the scriptures. He told them this is what is written, that Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. It was not only his disciples who were to know that the what the resurrection meant. This news was for all people, all humanity. And so Jesus sent his disciples out to the ends of the earth to proclaim the news of resurrection and its meaning to the whole human race. And history records that often Herculean efforts that all Jesus' followers have made to see that this is done. Men like Paul and Peter and Thomas and others roamed to the very edges of the map to proclaim the news to those who had not yet heard it. Missionaries have crossed great oceans and mountain ranges to find those souls who have not yet learned that their sins are forgiven. Great hardships have been suffered, lives and fortunes have been sacrificed so that the news of the resurrection might indeed spread from Jerusalem to all nations, even nations undreamed of at the time that this great mission began. And now we are the disciples to whom this great commission has fallen. 
We are the ones who are to follow in this work of the prophets and the apostles and diligent men and women of all ages. We are to call sinners to repentance and we are to assure them of the forgiveness of all of their transgressions. So let us go and tell all who are guilty of the sins that we have spoken about for these past 40 days and 40 nights of Lent. Tell the frightened that their moments of flight are pardoned. The Lord they fled from, has risen from the dead, and has come back to say, peace be with you. Tell those who once felt Christ's kingship as a burden that he has returned from the dead and has established a kingdom of pardon and peace. Tell those who once desired only the blessings of this life that freedom from death is now theirs through the resurrection of Christ. Tell those who once asked, what is truth? That the truth is Christ has risen from the dead to bring us forgiveness and immortality. Tell those who once did not take the claims, take Jesus' claims seriously, that every one of them has now proven true by the resurrection of Christ. And tell those who have not yet acknowledged their sins that the tears of repentance are never wasted because repentance and forgiveness of sins are being preached throughout all the world in the name of the risen and glorified Christ. Take this comfort for yourself when the sins you have committed threaten to haunt you. Take this comfort to others whose sins still stand between them and the peace of forgiveness that Christ has won for us all. Lent has lasted 40 days and 40 nights, a dark time of sin and curse, but it always ends on an Easter morning with the light of life streaming from the empty tomb and with the risen Savior's greeting, peace be with you. His resurrection has destroyed the curse of death for us. Let us tell all our fellow people who were under the same curse that through Jesus Christ and through his rising from the dead, we are eternally assured that the Father has indeed forgiven us. Let repentance and forgiveness of sins be preached in Christ's name to all nations. Let his resurrection be the Father's loud and mighty message to all people, your sins are forgiven. Amen. And I say, I say, I say, can't be that easy. And he said, he said, and no, it wasn't easy. But be still and know.